Good evening and welcome to another episode of On the Sofa. I'm Monia um, in our Edinburgh shop and joining me tonight is Keelan to discuss Clan Stewart. I'm joining you from an addition resident clan though a graduate sporting university in Scottish history. We love you both at school and you know that we have a site dedicated to them. If you're in the history of your recommend taking a look. There are over 500 family and clan associations around the world and we just love hearing new bits of history and hearing from our customers how they explored their heritage and trace their roots as well. So we are by no means experts, just really keen to share information. And um, we really do love digging into the often bloody and brutal stories, as you'll soon learn. And um, we also love highlighting the lesser known bits of Scottish clan history, like Caelan was saying, and the work of the clan societies around the world. So don't hesitate to chip in if you've got anything more to add. So this past month, we've been celebrating all things Clan Stewart. So join us as we delve into this clan's history and discover some of their most intriguing stories from the past and present. We'll be learning about some of their famous battles, famous faces, old and new, and so much more. We always welcome your input. So if you're associated with Clan Stewart and you have stories to share or questions to ask, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. Absolutely. So what better place to start than the beginning? So <laughs> there are four main branches of Clan Stuart, and they are Appen, Athol, Balquidder, and Butte. Um, and as such, their lands are spread throughout Scotland. So they range from the top to the bottom, basically. So the clan once owned some of the most recognisable properties in Scotland, including Edinburgh Castle, Stirling Castle, Linlithgow Palace, and Castle Stuart. So members of the clan made up um, the royal family from of Scotland um, from 1371 when Robert II took the throne all the way up until the death of Queen Anne in 1714. So Abby, as you can imagine, there are many places in Scotland to visit that have an association with one of the many famous Stuarts. And from my very brief list of some of the castles, you can tell that they have arguably the best castles in Scotland as well. So uh, well worth digging <laughs> into. <laughs> so let's move on to the clan chief. Clan Stuart is an armigerous clan, which means that the clan, family, or name is registered with the court of the Lord Lion, but does not currently have a chief recognized by the Lion Court. However, a few of the branches do have chiefs or leaders. The Earls of Galloway are now the principal branch of the clan, and Andrew Clyde Stewart, 14th Earl of Galloway, is considered to be the clan commander. The Court of the Lord Lion recognizes two of the Stewart family branches as clans in their own right, Stewart of Butte and Stewart of Avon. Of the two, the only one to have a recognized chief are the Stewarts of Butte. Their chief is John Bryce Crichton Stewart, 8th Marquess of Butte, who took over from his father, who unfortunately passed away from cancer in March um, 2021, this past year. That's really, so, really sad. Been sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so, Manya, can you tell us about the Stuart name and why there are two popular variations of it? Absolutely. So, the name Stuart is actually derived from an old English word um, meaning hall and guardian or warden. So, what is perhaps Slightly more interesting um, are the two well-known variations of the name as Kayla mentioned. So Stuart, which is the original spelling with a W, and Stuart said exactly the same, and um, which is the French spelling with a U. So the latter was the result of a lack of the letter W in the French alphabet, which makes sense. They switched it out. So the spelling came to popularity um, with the rise of French influence in Scotland in the 16th century. Um, which is why you will find people all over the world, Stuarts with a W and Stuarts with a U. You're all from the same family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Caelan, do you want to share a little more about one of Stuart's 
most well-known castles, although they are arguably all very well known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Clan Stewart has so many castles all around Scotland. Um, if you're Manya, you would say they're all the best ones. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but, <laughs> so it's it's hard to choose even a few to talk about, but we absolutely have to mention Edinburgh Castle, which Manya, I believe you can see from the shop. Is that correct? Yes. If you are stood in the street outside the shop at the right angle, you can see it poking above some of the other buildings. We are not far away at all. That sounds so dreamy. It is. Me. We are very, very lucky. Absolutely. I think we take it for granted a little bit that we've got something yeah. so amazing on our doors, literally on our doorstep. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so at one point in time, the stewards held Edinburgh Cas Castle, arguably the most notable castle, which they held um and edinburgh castle is located on an old volcanic plug in the center of edinburgh so it is thought that the first castle built upon the extinct volcano was constructed during the 12th century and it was primarily used as a royal residence base that is until the 17th century when its main use changed to military barracks Research shows that the castle has been attacked 26 times throughout its long history, mm -hmm. including the famous Lang Siege of 1571, when the castle held out for Queen Mary's cause for a whole two years. Having faced attacking forces so many times, Edinburgh Castle bears the title of the most besieged and attacked place in Great Britain. Sorry. And it is still looking absolutely fabulous, despite 26 yeah. times uh, <laughs> attacking it. Not all can be the same for, uh, well, judging by the numbers of ruins that we have in <laughs> So right. it must have been built well. <laughs> it might have, have something to do with that uh, being built on top of an extinct volcano. I mean, yeah, okay. it's probably quite good positioning. Yeah. <laughs> quite formidable as well yeah <laughs> um so hello to charlie um, and sandra as well who have joined us and um, do let us know if you've got any of your own stuart stories or anything you'd like to share and um, so while we are talking about uh well the royalty and uh all the all the excitement of the, yeah. the past Stuarts. <laughs> Um, we should also talk about the Duke of Albany as well. So the Dukedom of Albany is a title that was traditionally granted to younger sons in the Scottish royal family. And this is because Robert II's third son, who was also called Robert Stuart, was the first Duke of Albany and Regent of Scotland during the early years of James I of Scotland's reign. So other famous Scots that held the title were Lord Darnley, um, who was the second husband of Mary Queen of Scots, um, and uh, their son, actually, as well, James VI of Scotland and I of England. So additionally, Charles Edward Stuart, who is probably much better known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, actually gave his illegitimate daughter Charlotte the title Duchess of Albany. Like we were saying earlier, it's very nice to hear of a title being passed down to a woman, especially, yeah. in, you know, hundreds of years ago level yeah. of history. It didn't happen very often. So uh, I, I think that by that point, Bonnie Prince Charlie was kind of just doing whatever he wanted. So Oh yeah, I think he's given up on the, yeah, the official <laughs> passing down. So good for him. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you've been following the news as of late, you'll know that we are set to open our first US store in Albany next January with the city actually taking its name from the dukedom. And as soon as we settled on Albany as our new US home, we knew we had to design a tartan to represent the Scottish community within Albany County. There's a beautiful photo of it there. Um, so with the colors being taken from the Albany County seal, the town of Colony seal and the city of Albany flag. The set was inspired by that of the Stuart clan tartans in honor of James Stewart, who was the Duke at the time that Albany was named. There's a picture of him looking very sly, maybe. <laughs> He's got the right clothes <laughs> for a portrait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so um, 
Right, then there was an additional white stripe not found within the Stuart clan tartans that was added to create the salt here, which is uh, sort of like the flag you see in the back there. That's the uh, St. Andrew's cross within the design to represent Scotland's patron saint, St. Andrew. And the tartan is currently being woven, ready for our new store opening in January, but you can pre-order any items in the tartan for delivery early next year. So that's very exciting really on all is. accounts. And it's a beautiful tartan. It's it very, is. Yeah, very lucky that the, the city had chosen such gorgeous colors for, uh, <laughs> for their crests and seals. <laughs> so now on to the Stuart clan crest. Um, so the clan Stuart crest features a pelican, slightly unusually, feeding her young in their nest. So the Latin motto on the crest translates to courage grows strong at a wound. So the very curious thing about the pelican on the crest is that it's not an animal native to Scotland, which is maybe slightly an unusual choice for one of the most famous sh Scottish clans, basically. So it is thought that the Scottish Crusaders saw them during their journeys to the Holy Land. Earlier versions of the crest, which is a symbol of self, uh, earlier versions of the crest, sorry, would portray the pelican as feeding her young from the blood of her own chest, which is a symbol of self-sacrifice and puts the motto into great perspective. They're so quite a yeah, this. <laughs> this this is one of those ones that really does tie in very well together when you learn about the history of it. Sometimes I'm looking at the crest and I'm like, yeah, I don't really know why <laughs> they've selected that, but that that totally makes sense. Absolutely. Um, Even if it's changed slightly now, it does all pull together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the clan's most famous pipe music is the white banner of the Stuarts which in Gaelic, uh, the title is Braddock Vaughn non Stuvertacht, which I did uh, practice a lot. And although I hope that my my Gaelic tutor isn't watching just in case it, you know, wasn't like an A plus there, but. <laughs> I mean, it is miles um, better than I could even yeah. think to do, so. Yeah. Um, so the Stuart war cry is Craig on Scare, which uh, I found out translates to Cormorant's Rock in English. So this relates to the clan's original clan seat, Castle, Castle Stalker, which was built on Cormorant's Rock. Um, I guess what I what I'm finding with these war cries is it's as if they would you're you're basically shouting or crying out a a meeting place. Um, so that makes total sense. And that's why I think Macarena is going to pop in a link to the song in the comments. The white yeah. banner of the Stuarts. Really sounds very intense. Dive into the history through music as well. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Amazing. And we've yeah. also got Linda and Marjorie joining us as well tonight. And um, so thank you for watching. I um, hope you're learning something new about the Stuarts, despite them being so famous. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, and um, let's chat a little bit about the plant badge. So if you were going to guess which plant the clan Stuart would have, you might guess, I mean, if I was given three, three choices, I would probably guess that it is actually the thistle. And so you'll recognize this as the floral emblem of Scotland. And as such a large and influential clan, it's no surprise that clan Stuart adopted this plant as their own as well. And it is a very beautiful one, despite being a weed. <laughs> I said this earlier, it doesn't, I, I would plant these on purpose, so yeah, I think how, what a beautiful weed, you know. Isn't it? It's an amazing colour. Who would cut that <laughs> down? Well, I mean, that's why, <laughs> really why Scotland uh, decided to make it the, you know, the flower, literally the flower of yeah. Scotland. <laughs> Um, so, Manya, can you tell us who is allowed to wear the Clan Stuart Tartan? 
Of course. So um, the Stuart Royal Tartan, which is actually the one I'm wearing on my scarf here, is actually the personal tartan of the Queen. So theoretically, this means that the tartan cannot be worn without express permission from the Queen. But thankfully, due to its popularity, it has now been classed as a universal tartan, which means it can be worn by anyone who does not have their own clan tartan. Um, and you can see Queen Elizabeth uh, II there wearing the sash in Stuart Royal and looking incredibly glamorous and amazing there. Mm -hmm. So the scarlet red Stuart Royal tartan is one of the best known tartans in the world. If you're gonna recognize any, it's probably this one. However, there are many variations um, of it and if red is not your color, then the same set is available in black, blue, camel, as well as the dress variations, which are predominantly white. So lots of colour option there. You don't have to restrict yourself to red. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us more about what the terms modern and ancient mean in tartan terms? Absolutely. So most uh, tartans do have a few variations. Um, so basically before 1860, fabrics were coloured using animal and vegetable dyes. And that produced softer colours, typical of the ancient tartans. And a lot of people would say that they show off the pattern to a much greater effect because the contrasts are much brighter than in the modern tartans. So it's easier to see every line and every colour. So the pattern or set does remain the same across all variations of a single tartan and only the shades or tones vary. So post-1860, chemical dyes replaced the natural animal and vegetable dyes and the modern tartans were born with their stronger and bolder colours, which is why you get such dramatic differences despite <laughs> it being really the same tartan. <laughs> right, that's that's very interesting. I actually didn't know any of this until until pretty recently. And I believe I heard it from you, Manya. But oh. And it's it's very interesting, just the different, the history of why, and not just why, but how there were so many different variations. Absolutely. And it, yeah, it can be quite overwhelming if you're sort of just starting to look into your tartan and you're faced with all these different options. But hopefully that breaks right. it down a little bit and uh, <laughs> explains some of the, um, the, well, the many, many, you'll see if you're a Stuart, um, you'll see the many different options that you've got. So it can it can right. help you starting off. <laughs> For sure. Um, so let's now move on to one of my most favorite parts, our famous faces, which <laughs> Manya, you know I love. Oh yeah. I love talking about each time. <laughs> um, because I, I love researching the famous members of each of our clans of the month. And this month was particularly hard for me to choose as an historian with so many of my favorite historical figures in the mix here. I, of course, love Bonnie Prince Charlie, who doesn't? Um, <laughs> but I think I have to go with uh, Mary Stuart, Mary Queen of Scots is my favorite this month. Mary. So Mary Stuart, yes. <laughs> um, so she's most famously, of course, known as Mary Queen of Scots and she's mm -hmm. arguably one of the most talked about figures in all of Scottish history. She became queen the very moment that she was born and was one of the most sought after romantic partners when she was a young woman due to her illustrious charm, uh, intelligence and beauty. And of course she was a queen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, despite this, though, she had a very tough life, having been imprisoned for a lot of it and even dealing with the deaths of both of her husbands at a very early age, one of which was actually murdered. So Lord Darnley, which I believe was mentioned earlier, um, having the title at one time of Duke of Albany. Absolutely. Um, so he was Mary's second husband. And he was actually found murdered in his nightshirt in the courtyard of the Kirk of Field in Edinburgh alongside the body of his valet. There's a very intense image there of that. Wow. <laughs> um, so, um, so Mary was accused of the murder herself at one point, as was a man who later became her third husband, Lord Bothwell. 
So that's not only is that dramatic, but that's just mm -hmm. like, can you imagine if something like that happened today? Like your second, it'd be like, you know, such a huge, like your husband is found murdered and then you marry the person who's also accused, accused of, of the life. murder with you. That would just be, that's nuts. It's the kind um, of plot line <laughs> from a TV show that you just don't believe is realistic. <laughs> right. Which, and I think like many people still don't believe it's realistic, but also many like historians really are like a hundred percent that that happened. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just real. Um, yeah. Um, so speaking of historians on the topic, I, I love getting to open some of my most favorite old books. I have like a collection of really old books from like the 17th through the 19th century. So some are very mm -hmm. old. So these, um, which I conveniently have here, um, <laughs> didn't plan that at all. Um, no. These are my original copies of the, the famous biography, The Life of Mary, Queen of Scots by Agnes mm -hmm. Strickland. They're from the 1800s and I try not to open them too often so they don't get ruined, but I definitely did just for this occasion in looking up uh, Mary Queen of Scots. <laughs> so with all that said, Manya, who was your favorite Stuart to read about this month? So, I mean, it's very difficult because there are so many amazing Stuarts. Um, I have to say that learning about Mary Queen of Scots at primary school, she will always be one of my favorites, have a special place in my heart, all my uh, project work from school. Um, but I actually found out that Robert the Bruce is also a Stuart, so I might have to reevaluate yeah. my favorites now. <laughs> um, despite the name, he is a Stuart. Um, so he is most famous for his alliance with William Wallace and for his victory at the Battle of Bannockburn as well, where he helped Scotland win its independence once again. So he is a huge part of Scottish history. And if you've heard of Mary Queen of Scots and you're into even remotely into Scottish history, you've probably heard of Robert the Bruce as well. Yeah. So for what sure. I didn't know was that he is actually the very first Stuart King as well. Um, and that he is the 19th great grandfather of Queen Elizabeth II, which is absolutely wow. crazy, absolutely crazy that you can trace back. I feel like 19 generations back isn't far enough. <laughs> it feels like he was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it definitely puts a different spin on her using Royal Stuart as Absolutely. her tartan then as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, Got that direct line to it, so it makes perfect sense. And it's so cool when you think about R Robert the Butte. <laughs> Robert the Bruce <laughs> being, uh, you know, all for Scottish independence, you know, independent from England. And then, you know, we have the yeah. Queen of England. It's just like, there's, there's a lot of cool history there where you can see how much you're actually sort of melded together now with your historical figures. Yeah, definitely. It's all, it's so interesting, sort of the more and more you look into it and all these connections, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so now we have some beautiful wedding photos from one of our lovely customers, Angie, who is a member of Clan Stewart herself. And she says, um, I traced my grandmother's lineage back to Robert the Bruce. There we go. Why are we not connecting our lineage to Robert? I know. I feel like I want to trace my, my family back that far. Yeah. And well, I mean, Angie must have links to the queen somewhere down the line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, she does say, she says, I'm not sure if I did it right, but I'm going to go with it anyway, um, so which is totally understandable. Um, she says, I love the Stuart Tartan and, of course, the history. We were married in front of the Alien Donan Castle in 2018, which uh, she says is not a Stuart Castle, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> she says, we love the Isle of Skye and plan to return every five years. Next time will be soon in 2023. That's an amazing tradition. Absolutely. I mean, I'm jealous of that, and I think I'm more yeah. closer to Sky than they are. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but their wedding just looks incredibly dreamy. They're beautiful it's photos. Beautiful photos. Yeah. Thank you so much, Angie, for sending those in. It's uh, just stunning, and your little bits of um, 
Stuart Tartan as well, really set off against the, the backdrop as well. I love that she's used two different variations of the tartan as well. Absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, why should you choose one? Yeah. <laughs> what are your favorites? Yeah, it's your wedding yeah. day. Go for it. <laughs> And so we've got a few people joining us again. So we've got George, Glennis, Nancy, Leslie, and Hamish as well, all joining us. Thank you for watching. Oh, Hope okay. you're uh, enjoying learning about the Stuarts as much as we clearly are. It's, uh, I think, one of our favorite plans <laughs> combined. Um, so yes, you can tell we're really excited tonight. Yeah, we're this like is the time really we've been waiting <laughs> for. <laughs> And um, so we've got some more stunning photos from Marjorie as well, um, wearing her Stuart Tartans for Highland Dance. And you see them on the screen there as well. So the first one shows Marjorie and her mother, who's also Stuart, and um, both at the Scotland Run in Central Park in New York City, and um, wearing the Stuart dress tartan. And um, Kaylin, that's uh, well, a lot closer to you than it is to us. <laughs> but I believe you know Marjorie as well personally. So that's uh, I do know Marjorie. Yeah, she <laughs> we uh, do Highland dance together, and that's one of my favorite <laughs> pictures of her. Um, I yeah, we all. That's a very famous Marjorie uh, Highland dance photo. So I'm very <laughs> happy that it's. Absolutely. I'm sure she's watching actually. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, thank you so much for sending your photos in. They're so beautiful. Yeah. And the, the photo that Kaylin is talking about there is um, of Marjorie dancing at the West Point Military Tattoo. Um, and that one, she's wearing the muted blue Stuart dress tartan. Like you were saying earlier, I just, I don't think there's anything better than seeing a Highland dancer dressed in the full head to toe. It just looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. And you know what, Highland dancers don't always get to wear or just, you know, they don't always wear their own tartan. Ah, so it's especially, okay. um, it's especially cool that she's, you know, a Stuart wearing her Stuart tartan. Because sometimes you're like picking like, what kind of color do you want? You know, it's sometimes like that, but that's, I think that's just, you know, she's really representing for it's really special it's really cool. then, yeah, yeah. to be a shirt wearing the shirt if many people yeah. don't need to so yeah. <laughs> no thank you so much those photos are just so stunning um so we've actually got Stuart watching us as well first name rather than the surname <laughs> Great. so thank you Stuart for joining us as well and um, so now we've got a couple of questions so Kaylin do you want to start us off with the first one Sure. So our first question comes from Brian, who wants to know how he can get involved involved in a Scottish Stuart Society. So apparently located on Edinburgh's George Street is the Stuart Society office, which is a place where members of the society can visit for help and advice with their Stuart family research. They even have a library and a small museum filled with information about the clan for you to browse. Membership is open to all who bear the name Stuart of any spelling. So it doesn't matter, W or U. <laughs> um, and anyone also with a special connection to the family or a special interest in their history. So I think, Moni, you were saying that it's that's actually not very far from the shop. Yeah, so if you there. visit, yeah, if you visit the uh, the Stuart Society office, you can then head over to Scotland Shop check it out exactly learn <laughs> about your stuarts and then come and look at the stuart tartans it's yeah. super simple <laughs> <laughs> amazing so mary has also asked if there are any ghost stories related to the stuarts and it is no secret that ghost stories are one of my favorite things to learn about particularly in relation to scottish history and um, so I had to choose one um, from the best castle, obviously, Edinburgh Castle, so uh, which is right on our doorstep. So there is a castle ghost um, said to be a young boy who played the bagpipes. And the story goes, um, it dates back several centuries to when numerous tunnels were found under the castle that led to Holyrood Palace at the bottom of the Royal Mile from the, from Edinburgh Castle. So when the tunnels were discovered, there was great curiosity to see where the tunnels beneath the castle would lead. However, the entrance was only big enough for a young, very small paper boy to fit through. So he was sent down to investigate. And as instructed, 
he played his pipes really loudly as he walked through the tunnel. So above ground, people were able to keep track of where the young boy was and trace his progress and map out where the tunnel led um, at the same time throughout Edinburgh. So while it seemed to work for a little while, all of a sudden the pipe stopped somewhere near the site of the Tron Kirk, which is a church um, and it's an incredibly recognisable landmark on the Royal Nile. Um, if you've ever visited Edinburgh and done a ghost tour, you will 100% have heard many ghost stories about the, about the Tron. Um, and it actually has abandoned vaults underneath. So it's just all around spooky in that area. So search parties undertook rescue attempts, but the Piper boy had seemingly vanished. Sadly, the boy was never found. And although multiple efforts were made to recover him, they couldn't find a trace. So disturbed by his disappearance, the city council ordered the tunnel to be sealed, which is probably for the best, I would say. Um, so ever since his disappearance, people have actually heard um, or reported hearing faint underground sounds of a single bagpipe being played far below Edinburgh Castle and the Royal Mile. So you need to have a little listen out for that um, if you are in Edinburgh. It's... Uh, a musical ghost. If you're gonna have one, have a musical one. <laughs> I guess. It's uh, I mean... yeah. <laughs> a bit of a bit of a sad story as well, and um, probably didn't help the royals going to sleep in the castle. <laughs> uh, they could hear the piper playing all through the night. Yeah. That's it. So we do <laughs> hope you've enjoyed learning about Clan Stuart with us this week, um, and if you. Feel like you've learned a lot keep an eye out and um, for our Stuart clan quiz which will be coming very soon as well so you can put all your knowledge to the test yeah um also <laughs> next week you can join me and emily to talk about my thanksgiving over here in america mm -hmm. and um manya your saint andrew's day celebration in Scotland, which we have St. Andrew's Day here, but, you know, it's, it originates over there. So I think we're going to chat about, you know, what's the same, what's different, um, really? what kinds of uh, tartan might be involved in, in either <laughs> celebration. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. Well worth a listen. Lots of, yeah. um, well, I mean, I don't know a lot about, about the Thanksgiving and um, just the basics, the dinner, basically. Yeah. <laughs> So, like I, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> the most important part, isn't it? The food. It is. So. <laughs> Definitely worth a watch next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you soon.